Good evening and welcome to Greta Somerville for March 1st, 2011. I'm Joe Lynch. And I'm Kyan Anderson. And we are departing from the norm. We do not have a guest tonight, but we have multiple guests. And those guests are the city of Somerville. If you've got the viewers a viewers at home. A viewers at home. <laughs> if you have a phone and you want to make a comment, tonight is your night. We're going to talk about a multiple, multiple array of stuff. There's a lot of stuff tonight. going on. Lots of stuff. But first, I, I want to congratulate you what? for handling an annoying caller last week. Oh, I, you heard I, about him. I heard about yeah. it from you because, I'm, unfortunately, I could not watch the show live. Okay. And then because we are taping differently these days, yes. my, my editor in general yes. could edit out the final version. I don't know version. who that was, but somehow that caller didn't make it on the final cut. Something tells me he may be an associate of Charlie Sheen. <laughs> so, I the, that. the way that you describe the way that you described the caller, I just said you know. All three times. Well, you know, clearly it's nice. it was an interesting show. Listen, it's nice to have admirers. Oh I mean, they're God. calling you. Not those types, Joe. Come on. But we did have a blast at the Bill Burrell farewell. It was a, it was an yes. exciting event, and yep. then you got the week off, so that was I great. Did. I did. And now we are here to welcome Rachel. Rachel Appel, who is the new manager here. At SCAT. At SCAT. So we welcome Rachel. So We're going to have exciting. Rachel on at some point. We're going to give her a little breather, though. Yeah, it's very overwhelming to... taking over a television station. But... And then having to deal with us. And dealing with us. This is true. That's right. We'll give her a couple That's weeks. Right. So we've got a lot of things we're going to talk what about. Talk have about, we Jeff? got the phone number up? We do. 617-628-9876. Oh. So if you are watching us at home, or you got the announcement through the local media and blogs, if you're in the car, pull over yeah. and use your phone. Don't or text. If you, or if you have hands hel uh, hands free. Yeah, that's actually hands free is you fine. You don't even have a cell phone, Joe. Look at you. You're acting like you're all technologically aware. I, I love it. I, I have mean, I try to call them. You two don't cell phones, but you don't have the numbers. <laughs> Okay. See, I got, I got ran quick show out. I'm leaving? No, I'm just kidding. So what do you want to talk about? Let's talk about the weather. I, you know, I am going to make an announcement tonight, and it's going to be very, it's going to shock Somerville, but the announcement is that today, technically speaking, in the meteorological world, is the first day of spring. The meteorologists uh, that I was listening to television just before I came down okay. here, all the weather people and the meteorologists say yeah. March 1st technically is the first day of spring. You know what? Them. It was quite springy out, I have to say. It well, was gorgeous outside. I froze my chahootas off walking over the Wall Street Bridge today, so oh. I don't know what planet Maybe you were. were on. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will guarantee to you, Somerville, that on March 20th. Yeah, snowstorm. It is officially the first day of spring. I thought it was March 21st. March 20th. Sure? I looked okay. at the calendar today. Okay. And then on the 13th, it's daylight savings time. So we do have All something to look forward to. All these exciting events. I'm actually um, very excited about that it officially is the first day of spring. Um, I think the snow, I've, I've about had it as last week. All yep. of you who were watching, I was ranting and raving. Um, but it's done havoc on the roads. It's done a lot of damage to the roads this year. It's, it's done awful. a lot of damage to people's psyche. And it's a lot, done a lot of damage to the city's budget. Did you? Well, we'll get back to the budget in a second. Did you know that they shut down a lane on I-93 South in Somerville because of potholes? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because they were so well, dangerous. I mean, you're uh, a homeowner. If you don't take care of the property, sooner or later it breaks down, and that's what <laughs> yeah, happens to the roadways. Down. You know, they yeah. they push it, they push the envelope to the edge of the table, and yeah. then they, they oh, we got potholes. Well, of course you have potholes. You haven't done the thing in about 30 years. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, they've had a lot. Of, they've had a lot to do, but I, I do agree. I think it's done a lot to the budget, which is unfortunate. I think they spent what was it? I heard over a million of what? Yeah, they were I would assume. To spend the, the, well, the city removal? budgeted uh, five hundred thousand this year. Yeah, and they spent a million. And they've spent budget. over a million dollars at this point. But it's catastrophic to a budget, to yeah. anybody's budget. Yeah. You know, so. In Minnesota. Uh, uh, callers, we want to hear from you. We're going to talk about a few more things, but we want to hear from you. How do you think the city of Somerville did this year so far, with snow plowing, keeping the streets clear, keeping the fire lanes open, and snow removal? I had to make the difference there because mm. I think a lot of people, there was a split decision this year. Yeah. A lot of people were giving kudos to the DPW crew and the, and the city for keeping the roads open. Yeah. But when it came to removing the snow that had piled up. But what do we have to compare to, though, Joe? Because we've never had to remove, I, I, I mean, I've been here since 98. I don't remember us having to actually physically remove the snow because there was so much. 
Um, right. So, like, you know, I can understand people complaining, but at the same time, you know, this is a record year of snow. And, I'm, you know, I, I look at both sides, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a valid comment, but yeah. I just, you know, I don't remember a snow Well, I guess, process. you know, a lot of neighbors have said the same thing to me. You know, at least they could take it off the corners. At yeah. least they could take it out of the fire lanes. Yeah. At least... At well, least, at least, everybody has their own priority. You know, it's interesting, though. There was something that was going around on one of these um, Yahoo groups, and it was talking about how there was a natural uh, traffic calming. <laughs> because you oh, couldn't sure. see. I mean, and actually, well, I... the same could be said for potholes. <laughs> <laughs> Those slow people down. <laughs> or it's more of like an agility, you know, like right. hand-eye coordination right. Right. kind of helping right. you with that. Yeah, my own feeling about it is, you know... Uh, because of the extraordinary amount of snow and the extraordinary mm -hmm. the the quick time frame the yeah. rapidity of those snows i think i my personal opinion is the city's going to have to come up with a better way of removing the snow yeah and where to put it yeah. once they remove it you know just because it worked for the past 30 40 years yeah. doesn't mean it's working now well you know it's not going to snow probably at all next year because they're going to have this big plan in place i think it's a great idea That's did you know that ward seven this is kind of random i'm, I'm switching topics because the weather i'm just so sick of it i don't want to talk about it anymore yeah. ward seven was named the safest ward did by you know that? By who? Alderman According Train? According to the polls. What do you think? <laughs> Alderman Train named it. I don't know, but I read, this on, I read this on a blog, a yeah. uh, Somerville blog, and yeah. um, there were some comments as to, you know, why wasn't this ward? I, I, you know, what? Oh, 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 you're talking about the Resistat. Was it from Resistat? It, it's the Resistat presentation that the city okay. does. The city collects a lot of data and then does these presentations. Okay. So the crime log statistics and the calls from the police, Yeah. they, they calculated who was the safest and... Well, I find that interesting just because there's been a couple of incidents. I mean, we don't want to dwell too much on the negative here at Greater Somerville because yeah. we're so cheery and positive. We but are. there was that. First day of spring, March 20th. It is, can you tell? We're both so springy. Um, there was the. Um, there was a shooting in Union Square. I, I did see that. Last Thursday I did night. See that. And they right, still right don't. Right behind us. At the St. Joseph Parish. They, they still don't know who it was. They haven't found it. No, but they <laughs> suspect because it was targeted that the they knew each the other. victim and the uh, the so assailant knew each hard. other. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not random people. No, no, no. It's not random, yeah. but nonetheless, that's a little. But it scary. gives you pause. I mean, that you know, I know it's you have happening to be careful here. out there. I'd say. But we have a new police chief. We do. Yeah, and we still have uh, Captain Cabral. Uh, I should say, uh, Deputy Commander mm -hmm. Cabral, and I figured I said it before on the show. You know, there was a little controversy about. Mm -hmm picking somebody from the outside, yeah. I think we're very fortunate to have the two of them. Yeah. So let's hope they catch them. Well, there are a lot of promotions last year. There was a, the Lots of promotions, yeah. 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 And you know, um, typically, somebody asked me about that, too. They said, why are they promoting and hiring so many? Yeah. Primarily, folks, it's because they know who's going to be retiring. Mark, well, the, senior. With 42 it. years on the force. Yeah. That's yeah. impressive. They he's know who's, who's retiring within yeah. six months, 12 yeah. months. 18 months so they have to start hiring and keep the yep. keep the process going but um, we have some other things that are happening in the city politics is coming up how about scandals we got any scandals hanging around I, so you know, why are you looking at well, me? Because, you're you know, the one that always knows the scandals, goes, Joe. I you know, they're on the front page of both of the local newspapers. Scandals. Well, we had one that okay. um, still has some people concerned, but I think it's better to let it play out before we start making judgments on things. The um, Council on Aging, um, oh, there have been allegations yes. made against the, the director of the Council on Aging. There was an eyewitness report on one of the local TV stations about her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the mayor's basically said, we're going to handle this internally, and then we're going to turn it over to a, an outside so investigator. So right I think that's still ongoing. Um, we did, he's not directly related to Somerville, but, you know, he, he was part of um, what they used to call the left progressive delegates mm -hmm. at the State House. Um, the former uh, Senator Marzilli. Mm hmm is going to jail oh, I heard that. for sexual harassment. Yeah, yeah. not yeah. good. And primarily, they got him for lying. You know, it's God. not good if you do something stupid. You just got to come I out with just it. Gotta, you got to come out with it. Charlie Sheen, you know, just Char got <laughs> and it, it just all comes back. You know, I feel bad for oh, Charlie. I do not. He, I, I feel don't. bad. He has lost all touch with reality. Well, uh, because it, they're things that come in little pills and elsewhere. That's right. why, where that reality right. comes from. I don't well, feel bad for him at all. Well, at least he's not blaming it on the toothpaste. Well, he sure as heck doesn't have... <laughs>
<laughs> he sure as heck doesn't have a PR sure. person anymore because he was on the Today Show where he was on one of these no, daily I mean, shows. And he, no, Joe, he was so, I, I mean, he must have fired his PR person because this, uh, clearly well, no, he's they've in, left. gone insane. Or they've left. They've left. He's gone insane. And he's let them in. He has two girlfriends now. I mean, it's just scandalous. Yeah. not even worth our time talking about. It. But you know what is worth our time? This is something we forgot to mention when we were talking about the police force. Um, there is America's Most Wanted All-Star is a competition um, where you can nominate um, your favorite... Your you know, hometown guy or gal. Guy or gal, police yep. person or, yep. you know, person in service. <laughs> and um, uh, Detective Mario Oliveira is um, up for winning this very prestigious award. So we are, and you know, Somerville, Greater Somerville, we're pushing that obviously uh, for his bravery and everything he's done so for we the city of Somerville. You vote, you go to, and this can be up on our blog, so if you don't get this, go to our blog tomorrow, www.amw.com, and then it's forward slash all star forward slash 2011. Yep. Um, you have until April 2nd and you can vote as many times as you like but again we'd um, encourage you to vote multiple times so that he can win the America's Most Wanted All Star. Vote Mario Oliveira multiple times. Yeah. How's that? Okay so that's more positive. Good luck Mario. Um, did you know that the Somerville Museum, the donations have been extended to March did. 15th? I did, I, I did. I donated like the very last on Valentine's Day because yeah. I, I knew that I was supposed to and I forgot and it's been extended. So for those of you who haven't been able to vote, um, excuse me, donate rather to the museum. The museum uh, building fund. Yeah, please yep. do so. And I'm 15th. pleased to report um, that through multiple, <laughs> multiple uh, pressure points, Mm. Not, not just myself, but yeah. there are multiple other people uh, who were working behind the scenes on the world's greatest university, Tufts University. I'm pleased to report that um, Tufts University has come through with a sizable donation to the Somerville Museum oh, Building Fund. that's wonderful. So I, we got that word yesterday. That's wonderful. And I got a, a response immediately this morning with a phone call from Ellen Batnelli from the Somerville Museum oh, thanking us profusely oh. for having uh, Barbara uh, Mangum on yeah. the show to talk about the oh, Somerville Museum right. because they saw membership in the museum go up, 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 up. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, so, we can do what we can. That's hey, good. we help. We help in any way we can. We're going to keep moving and we're talking about... What do you want to talk about? Uh, Politics? Ro Royal, no. White, Royal White Laundry. Oh, Did scandal. I don't know if it's a scandal, well, though, because, you know, when you have to pay... The city's taking it? Well, wait a minute. You have to pay your taxes on your house. Yes, I do. You have to pay your water and sewer, mm -hmm. just like me and thousands of other homeowners and businesses yeah, in yeah. the city of Somerville. Mm -hmm. I was shocked when I found out that this business... I mean, I feel bad because it's tough They've economic times, but been here forever. They owe the city in excess of $300,000 wow. in both taxes and uh, water and sewer. So the city had started proceedings against them in court, um, yeah. I think it was over a year ago. And the city won the judgment and basically so is taking, taking the property for... for so they're taking yeah. not only the, there's the, the building, but there's that whole slot of land, that the main building too, right next yeah, to the... Uh, yeah, the let's, let's be clear about it. I think, okay. the, I think one that's... of the reporters had reported that both properties were on Cedar Street. I looked it up. The property that's being taken, the address is 13 Warwick. So it's the actual factory where they do the okay. laundering, not the outlet that's on Cedar Street where the old Dairy Queen was. So if anybody has any information that's different from that, yeah, please let in. me know. Um, but my understanding is 13 Warwick Street, um, it was awarded to the city through the court system. So God only knows what they're going to do with it, but I don't wow. think the city should be in the business of owning a whole lot of land because yeah. they can't even keep up the buildings they have now. So. Okay. There yeah, you go. So politics. Let's talk a little bit about politics, and we're going to move right into okay. one of our favorite subjects. And what is that, Joe? Our favorite subject for tonight is going to be Max Pack oh. and the uh, union yeah. organizers yep. trying to get the developer to honor the covenant, the, the covenant mm -hmm. which said, we encourage you to use yeah. union labor, and we encourage you to sign a project labor agreement. And there was a to date, this week. the developer last week. last week, and the developer is just basically saying, "No, yeah. that's 
what's happening. Well, see, but that's always the problem, up. though, because that is something that, you know, he, uh, Joe and I worked together on the um, community principles guidelines, yeah. which created the covenant years ago, and that's how we met. And actually, right. that was always um, a concern that we had was if the developer decided to split the land up. And, you know, at that point, we were dealing with KSS, but then it, you know, it's, as you know, it's new gone. Partners. There's new partners and everything, and that was our thing, that they, whomever they would be at the end, when this got developed, would hold on to the provisions of that covenant throughout the whole thing. And I think that right. it's easy for them to just be like, oh, well, you know, we don't know what you're talking about. Well, we remember what was in that. And, and we crafted it. We did craft it. We crafted it. A lot it. of that. So we a lot of lively conversations. We understood so. exactly why the city solicitor was guiding us one yeah. way and yes. saying you can't do this legally you cannot mandate union yeah. labor so let's talk about it in a minute i want to get to politics because i think we've got i had a couple of emails and let me just let me see if i can remember uh oh somebody asked me uh, via an email where do you come up with the guests and the show ideas well, uh oh that's two Today. different stories here because I come up with the guests because I know a lot of the, the elected officials and the politicians and people in the city and And then I come parts up with some of the guests on the, you know, specials every now on and On the again. specials. Right. Because you're considerably younger than I am. Yes, I am, Joe. <laughs> I, got, I got to butter her up a little bit. She's letting me talk politics. And yeah. Cayenne... It's not that you have a distaste for politics. You just oh, think, I actually really like politics. You just like think we politics. should mix it up a little bit. Well, but that seems to be your kind of soapbox. You well, know what I mean? I mean, and I just, I know when that is on, yeah. Joe stands on the soapbox and goes. So there you go. I'm quite interested in so politics. So it's my soapbox because it's quarter up. So we have some announcements. No, but wait a second. Hold no, we're going into politics. The person politics. who was talking about the, the they didn't like the, sh uh, what was their, they just asked, where do we come up with the show ideas? Yeah, the, I mean, in it terms was, of explaining how can we go from politics from to politics, say like because we try to you know, spice it up with variety. I like variety. I like variety, okay. I like variety I just too. Want to make sure that you said that. So, okay. so Great. my favorite subject, politics. I spoke to a bunch of people today, and we can confirm a lot of things. Alderman Bob Train in Ward Seven is going to have at least two opponents come September, October, um, and possibly a third. We've confirmed, and it was in the news today, so I'm not breaking any news, Katiana Ballantyne is um, a longtime resident of the Teal Square area, and she will be running. Uh, there is still a question mark about Joan Puglia, and then a possible third, and I couldn't get someone to tell me the name. In Ward 4, Walter Pero will have two opponents. Uh, first opponent, very well known to the city of Somerville, Tony Left Went. I'm, I'm looking at the phone because I know people have, have called once and I, I missed it. Uh, Tony LaFuente, former mayoral candidate and former alderman at large candidate, is now running for Ward 4. And a woman named Christine Barber has also declared publicly uh, that she will be running against Alderman Pero in Ward 3. Tom Taylor may or may not, I haven't confirmed it, may or may not have an opponent in Suzanne Brema, former mayoral candidate, and at large, um, former chief of staff to former mayor Dorothy Kelly Gay, Sean Fitzgerald, is seriously considering a run uh, at large. So that's what I got for politics. Well, that's exciting. So as far as the landscape looks this year, we've got uh, a couple of ward races, maybe an at-large race, mm -hmm. and all the incumbents that I spoke to are running again. They are. So we broke the we mayor's broke party. We did. The we mayor's did. party. So that's pretty much with politics. Um, you know, more time as we go on, we'll have more updates. But that's what we know for sure. Okay. And I'm sure you'll so keep us politics. up on all that. Okay. You know, something I read today, since we're not getting any callers, Joe claims that um, we're getting callers tonight, but I haven't, I haven't I, seen that. I saw that. it blink once, or am no. I seeing stuff out I of the corner of my glasses again? Clean your glasses. 617-628-9876. Right. Um, <laughs> on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> right on the bottom. Um, you know something that I read today I thought was interesting? The median family home prices fell sharply in 2010. I saw that. But condominiums yeah. fell nearly 29 percent condominiums yep condominiums, condominiums and multifamily yes prices home prices prices were down 29 percent. 29 percent but singles singles were, were up up nine percent and then multi and multi-families down five see you didn't think i did what you told me to you do did but you? i asked him to do research you said brush up on what brush we're going to up on what we're going to talk about <laughs> no but i what i thought was interesting is that one of the reasons why the condos fell so sharply because what i do feel that there's just so many 
windows out there. It's just yeah. very saturated. Oh, yeah. We have a caller. Yep. Um, we do have a caller. You want to take this? No, I'll you take can. We'll just take press it. the button. You're by the phone. Whoops. Oh, my gosh. Joe just hung up on him. Call back. Did Sorry I hang up that. on you? Sorry, caller. No, I think you, you did it right. You just pressed that button. They'll call back. Yeah, you pressed um, it. They were talking about the condos. One of the reasons it was such a high number was because last year there weren't, it didn't, didn't fall that badly, and so it just kind of caught up with itself. Um, but 29%, that's awful. So yep. hold on mm -hmm. until maybe the green line yeah. comes. You know, it's funny. I mean, I do, I do have an opportunity later in the day to watch, you know, MSNBC or CNN yeah. and stuff. And, you know... It, it, I don't know where these economists are coming up with, you know, we're, we're on the, the brighter side of the, yeah. the recession. The recession is not going to show any significant oomph until yeah. you start putting people back to work. Yeah. Well, I was that, actually... That's plain yeah. and simple. And if the unemployment rate holds above 9%, mm -hmm. that to me is indicating stagnation. Yeah. You know? Well, they're talking about how all the um, all the cities are so underwater. We have another caller. Mm -hmm. um, that's bringing okay. everything down. Hi, you're on Greater Somerville. Hi, Joe. Hi, Diane. Dennis Sullivan. Dennis, Hi, Dennis, how are you? I just I just got in and I put on channel three and uh, I'm enjoying the show. The, the two minutes I've watched of it. Thank you. Uh, Dennis, what are you doing on the weekend? Dennis, we have a question for you. What do you got? How many calls this winter have you gotten about snow removal or snow plowing? I would probably say maybe. 20 calls, like, that's including emails, too. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad, Dennis. No, I think the city, you know, you look around Medford and Watertown, you drive around, I think we did a pretty good job. It just got to a point where there was no place to put it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and we really never had that thaw we had, you know, several years ago when we had a lot of snow. We yeah. had a thawing. We didn't have that this year. Yeah. Dennis, did you know that meteorologically speaking, today oh, is the gosh. first day of spring? No way, really? Yes. Yeah, he put that on in the beginning of the show, and he just wants to make make sure he gets credit for doing some investigation. I want to make sure that Somerville is happy. There's only two and a half to three weeks left until the official well, start Dennis of spring. Dennis is always happy. Remember oh, that. That, that, no, that. That sounds great, but this winter particularly yeah. was a tough one. Yeah. We're ready. Hey, Dennis, I hear you have um, made an announcement. Get, would you like to make an, another announcement here on Greater Somerville? I, I, my wife and I... Are expecting uh, a baby July 12th. Oh, Very congratulations. Good. Congratulations, Dennis. So uh, we're about uh, just over five months oh my goodness. along and uh, looking forward to it. Now, do you know what you're having, or are you going to keep that a secret no, until we the end? we had the, uh, the ultrasound that we could have determined the, the baby's uh, gender, but we decided, uh, we told the doctor we didn't want to know, so they kept it, uh, oh, they that's kept great. it from us. Very good. Very good. That's what a surprise it's going to be, Dennis. And what, what's amazing, when you look at the ultrasound... It's amazing how fast the baby's heart beating. Oh, my God. Now, was there Incredible. one heart or two, Dennis? Only one. Good <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I just came from a meeting. Uh, they had a meeting at Assembly Square. They were going over Assembly Square, and the, uh, the bidding for the MBK, the Orange Line T-Station, should mm -hmm. be happening in the next month or so. so oh, that's wonderful. That's on track. Yeah. Great. So, and now, is that true that did they take... You know, there was some um, plan. There was some funding that was um, allotted for the community path, and it's switched over now to the to the assembly square, the orange line. Is that true? You know, I'm not sure. I, I know that that the orange line question came up, and it, it's definitely on track. It's, it is okay. Be, I'm uh, pretty sure that's what happened. Bid, probably, in the, you know, sometime in April. That's great. Yeah. That's great news. Dennis, I'll, I'll try to find that out for you. Yeah. Okay. That'd be great. Thank Dennis, you. Dennis, let's just hope that um, you know that orange line station doesn't get built. Uh, well in advance of anything at assembly. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you know something? They were saying um, that assembly square we actually was in the running with some uh, biomedical companies. Uh, that the, the one that went to Santerre, I think uh, I can't remember the name of the company. Yeah. But the fact that some of it was competing with Cambridge and Boston, uh, you know, was a good sign. That is yeah, a good yeah, sign. That's yeah. good to hear. Remember, Dennis Sullivan, what it's all about is jobs, jobs, jobs. Definitely. And, and uh, the mayor had a little presentation tonight, too, after. And basically, the, uh, the, the number of jobs in the city has remained stagnant, you know, since the 1990s, which is approximately 20,000. Yeah. Um, you know, it's gone up, I think, you know, several thousand here and several thousand, but pretty much uh, the average has been around 20,000. So that's something we have to work on, I think, Assembly yeah. Square could really put us on the, on the right track. It's a lot but, of opportunity yeah, there. Yeah, let's hope so. So, well, listen, keep up the good work. My only uh, regret is that I, I didn't come in early to watch the beginning of the show. That's right. You can check out our blog, Dennis. Sounds Catch good. Okay, congratulations. Congratulations. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.
Oh, that's great news. Alderman Sullivan will be a proud papa and his wife Melissa. Congratulations. Okay. So let's get into let's get into the Max Pack thing. We probably only well, we've have got about a couple three, minutes, and three I minutes have some left. upcoming events that I want to go over. So maybe a minute. Here's a couple of points that I wanted to make about Max Pack. Okay. There was a question that was asked at the public hearing yep. by one of the union organizers, who kept who pointedly asked the question of the Board of Aldermen, mm -hmm. "What were you thinking when you signed this covenant?" Well. They didn't sign the covenant. I was going to say it. Right. Yeah. They asked for these things to be put into the covenant. Mm -hmm. We, being on that advisory committee, mm -hmm. asked for interpretation from the legal staff in the city of Somerville. Yes. So the city of Somerville cannot mandate a project like MaxPAC to use union labor. Yes. What was put in there was one sentence. It amazed me when I took a look at the mm -hmm. covenant again. Mm -hmm. The covenant has four or five paragraphs about the benefits the city is going to get. Mm -hmm. And then there was one sentence at the very end of it that says, and here's the key word, okay. we encourage the developer to use union labor yeah. and to sign a project labor agreement. So a lot of the stuff that's being reported, folks, you have to be very careful. Yep. The city of Somerville cannot mandate any private developer to use union labor on their projects. But they are working towards uh, getting some sort of resolution. What can kick in sense. is the behind the scenes pressure okay. by the mayor. Yes. He signed the covenant with the developer mm -hmm. to say, look guys, mm -hmm. you know, we've given you all kinds of state grants, yeah. federal grants, city grants. Mm -hmm. The community worked with you to get your project done. Yep. You at least owe this city a chance and yeah. its laborers and workforce a chance to work on this project. They do that. And I think they should do the right thing. Sometimes politi politicians do not do the right thing. This is absolutely the right thing for the mayor to put the pressure on this developer yeah, and say, work with these unions mm -hmm. and make sure you do everything in your power to get Somerville residents jobs at that site. That's true. That's my take good on point. it. That's a so. good point, Joe. A um, couple of upcoming events here. we got a couple of minutes. Um, there's a Prospect Hill Academy Winter Warmer Fundraiser that's going on uh, tomorrow at the Burren from 6 to 8. $20 to get in, and it's supporting a very good cause, so I uh, request that you go look at that. Uh, there's a community meeting on, when is it, March 3rd at 7 o'clock to discuss the development of East Broadway. That meeting is at 165 Broadway in Somerville. Uh, the Cross Street Senior Center, and I think that's a very good cause. That's the lower Broadway redo? Correct, yep. yeah, and I think yeah. that's going to be um, pretty impressive. I want to see something go into that Star Market building. We might have another call. Uh, Can well, we take a quick note? No, we've got 30 seconds. I'm All sorry. Right. I, I apologize, caller. Okay. We have 30 seconds. Um, and then, finally, the Maple Syrup Boil Down is Saturday, March 5th from 10 to 2 at the Somerville Community Growing Center on Vinyl Street, and it's basically go there and learn how to make maple syrup, and Restaurant Week is in next Somerville week. next week. Next week. So, we'll do another one of these in the short distance, in the not too distant future. <laughs> Thanks for joining Greater Somerville. Stay, stay safe, stay informed. Good night. <laughs>